Hi everybody, this is Dr. Brichter Von Doom. In this video I'm going to show you how to make Captain America's Special Forces unit from the Second World War, the Howling Commandos. Starting with the front row, on the left we have the Frenchman Jacques Dernier, then we have Dum Dum Dugan next to him in the bowler's hat, then we have Steve Rogers, Captain America himself, next to him is Bucky Barnes, and then on the far right we have the Englishman James Fallsworth, Behind him, we have uh, another uh, Englishwoman, uh, Peggy Carter. Next to him, the American Jim Morita. The um, other American in the unit, Gabe Jones, next to him. And then somebody who doesn't appear in the MCU, but in comics is part of the Howling Commandos. We have Lucky Logan, or James Howlett, later known as Wolverine. To make World War II era Captain America, I used the torso from Avengers Age of Ultron Captain America and swapped out the blue arms for white arms. He kept his uh, light brown gloves and then I gave him this light brown utility ammunition pouch from the Catman minifigure from the Batman uh, movie. He has uh, the circular uh, shield. His legs are a uh, Han Solo um, leg to give him that holster for a sidearm which he does use in combat and then the head and helmet are the most recent Captain America uh, version both from the Avengers video game and from the most recent end game uh, Captain America. Mm -hmm. His companion Bucky Barnes has a torso from a First Order officer from the Battle Pack many years ago. He has dark brown legs. He has the original Bucky Barnes uh, face from uh, Civil War, which I thought worked well for his World War II uh, era version. And then he has the lighter brown sideswept um, hair to complete the uh, look. Next up, we have a Frenchman and an Englishman fighting side by side against the enemy that is Hydra. So on the left, we have Jacques Dernier. He uses uh, original um, Tony Stark face for his mustache and unfortunately it's uh, dual sided so there is a face at the back which I usually try and avoid in my minifigures but this was the best face that I could find to suit him. Uh, he has a uh, leather jacket from uh, the Owen Grady uh, Jurassic World uh, minifigure uh, although I've added brown arms on the side to make it a jacket instead of a vest. He has tan pants and then he has uh, this side pouch which in the movies he uses to um, carry explosives. Uh, both him and James Fallsworth on his left have a uh, beret. Jacques wears it facing forwards whereas uh, Fallsworth wears it on the side. It would be more accurate if um, Fallsworth was red, but that doesn't exist, so black will have to do. For Fallsworth's head, I used an Imperial Army officer from the Solo Star Wars Battle Pack. His torso is that of a rebel trooper from the Rogue One Battle Pack, and then the uh, legs are from the modern, um, I think it's the, the modern jungle or zoo line with uh, the uh, cargo... Um, pockets in the front which gives him a uh, militaristic look. Next up we have Dum Dum Dugan and Peggy Carter. So for uh, Dugan he has a gray bowler hat from the uh, Monster Fighters uh, line although there are many sets that uh, bowler hats come in and a black one would probably be even better. His face is from one of the rebel trooper, sorry, one of the resistance troopers in uh, the Star Wars sequel um, battle pack, as is his uh, light tan torso. Because I found a lot of the commandos have a sort of vest that goes over their fatigues, he has different colored arms, in this case dark tan, and then he has uh, dark tan camouflage pants with uh, um, pockets on them. Um, which were modified from a rebel trooper from one of the uh, older uh, battlefront uh, battle packs. And this is to represent what I think are German paratrooper pants that he must have commandeered at some point uh, during the campaign. Uh, next to him we have uh, Peggy Carter. This isn't really based on any particular version of her. I just thought that the uh, trench coat 
look for her worked really well, given that she's both uh, in civilian attire and military attire throughout the films and her spinoff uh, TV show. So this one is from Tina Goldstein from the uh, Fantastic Beasts um, Wizarding World collectible minifigures. And then the head and hair are both from the most recent uh, Captain Carter collectible minifigure. Next up, we have the units, uh, Heavy Machine Gunner and Gabe Jones on the left and their communication specialist, Jim Morita, on the right. So for Gabe Jones, he has the uh, helmet from the Rogue One uh, troopers in the battle pack that came out with that movie. And it is based on World War II and Vietnam era American helmets. So it is very appropriate for um, trying to make World War II era soldiers. His torso is an arm swapped out version of a resistance trooper from the ATM6 uh, heavy walker set and then he just has regular dark brown uh, pants. For uh, Jim Morita, his face is Simon Masrani from the uh, Jurassic World uh, sets. He has a dark gray uh, beanie and then a gray um, jacket again from a Rogue One um, Rebel Trooper from those battle packs, and then he has that same dark tan with pockets uh, legs, and he has a light uh, tan um, uh, satchel on the side. I think it carries some of his uh, radio equipment in the movies. And then finally, Bubs, we have everyone's favorite uh, grumpy Canadian. This is, uh, of course, uh, Lucky Logan or James Howlett, uh, the future Wolverine, when he was fighting in the Second World War. In some iterations of the character, he was in fact in the Howling Commandos alongside Captain America and Bucky. Of course, in uh, Wolverine Origins, you see him exiting a landing craft in, during the uh, D-Day invasion of Normandy. In any case, uh, he has that same Rebel Trooper helmet from Rogue One. Uh, the resistance trooper torso from the, the battle pack, and then tan uh, pants. Uh, the face is from uh, the second iteration of Wolverine in that Sentinel attack set with the Blackbird. And then just to complete the ensemble, he has a cigar as well, which is just a uh, paintbrush uh, accessory with the tip uh, cut off. And uh, this is in no way uh, meant to endorse smoking. Remember, the only reason Wolverine can do it is because he heals immediately from the terrible damage that smoking does to the body. Uh, I am a uh, doctor after all, Dr. Brichter Von Doom, so I just wanted to throw that in there for you guys. So there you go. I know it's based on older content, but I still love the first phase of the MCU, and this was a fun project to go back and make the members of the Howling Commandos, and hopefully with, uh, you know, based on a limited number of sets so that it's pretty easy to put together yourself. Let me know what you think of it in the com comments below, and let me know if you have any other thoughts on how to build uh, the Howling Commandos, or if there's anybody in the unit that I missed. Thanks for watching the video. See you again soon. Bye.